Hello, and welcome to our conversation about assessment. The word assessment actually means to sit beside someone and talk. I think that though if you'd ask some classroom teachers, this word means something much differently, especially now as teachers across the state of Connecticut are preparing kids for that Connecticut mastery test. Those results are published in the Hartford Current every single year, and teacher, <clears throat> teachers get concerned about whether or not their kids are going to do well in that assessment. What is assessment? Assessment should tell us how comfortable children are in their literacy environment and where we need to go to help those students. Its key purpose is to inform instruction. Assessment drives instruction. It tells us where our kids are and what their needs are and where we need to take them next. Good assessment draws on multiple sources of information. And also good assessment results in knowledge that is useful to both students and teachers. I think that second one is key, where we have to make sure that we draw on multiple sources of information. If we only use the Connecticut Mastery Test as information about our students, that's not a good thing. We need to make sure that we look at our kids holistically. Hence the reason why I've asked you to do multiple assessments in developmental reading. You have interviewed a student, you'll be doing the concepts about print, you'll be doing a phonemic awareness, and then a running record. Multiple sources of information to help you understand who your children are and where you need to take them next. If we only use the Connecticut Mastery Test as a form of assessment in placing our kids, let's say, in guided reading groups, that really isn't very fair. You never know what's going on in one particular day with the kiddo, so make sure that you use multiple sources of information. Good assessment gives students optimal conditions for showing their capacities. Good assessment involves students in self-assessment. There's no ownership if it's one way. Very, very key to understanding that. Your kids should be involved in the assessment process. They should understand what they're being assessed on, how they're being assessed. Good assessment also admits the potential for fallibility. At some point you need to say, what's wrong with this assessment? Is it measuring what I wanted to measure? So for example, if you give an assessment to your class, let's say a math test, and 85% of the kids fail the test, that doesn't mean that your kids are not good in math. Perhaps that could possibly mean that maybe you need to teach them in a different way. Or there's something, there might be something wrong with your test. Some concerns about assessment. We have the, that whole thing about validity and reliability. Is the test being measuring what you want it to measure? Whether or not it's credible. Who invented the test? Who created the test? Does the teacher have the knowledge that they need to be able to teach the kids what they need to know to feel successful on the assessment? Are kids given enough time to take the assessment? What's the curriculum like? Does it coincide with the teaching? And that last one in terms of bias, and we talked about this last week in class, lots of different kinds of biases. We have content and conceptual bias. Your kids are going to come to you with different prior knowledge. Linguistic bias, functional bias, why do I need to know this? Would be a good question for kids to ask. Consequential bias, what am I going to do with this information? The more standard and norm, the more the bias on the exam. Very important quotation here from Garcia and Pearson. Assessment is a political act. Assessment tells people how they should value themselves and others. They open doors for some and close them for others. The very act of giving an assessment is a demonstration of power. One individual tells the other what to read, how to respond, and how much time to take. One insinuates a sense of greater power because of greater knowledge. For example, the possession of the correct answers. The political dilemma is a problem for all students, but it is particularly acute for students from diverse cultural, linguistic, and economic backgrounds whose cultures, languages, and identities have been at best ignored and at worst betrayed in the assessment process. Very, very powerful quotation here from Garcia and Pearson. Assessment is a very powerful thing to do. As the teacher, you're the one that holds all the power. So like I said last week in our conversation, when you ask kids to read the first 25 pages of a novel and then answer 10 questions that you have created, by the way, you know the answer to all those um, questions, that's very powerful. You're telling your kids what to read and how to respond to those questions. Different types of assessment, assessment through observation. So sometimes we take anecdotal notes or we make some records of our kids while they're in the classroom. Assessment through interaction, we conference, we interview, we coach kids. 
We analyze student work. We take a look at work samplings. We holistically score kids' writing and then assessment through student self. Sometimes it's great to ask students, well, how do you think you're doing right now? What grade do you think you deserve on this particular piece of writing? Different kinds of evaluations. We might grade students with by um, their logbooks or their journals, assessment through running records and retelling stories, assessment through portfolios, whether they're ongoing, and the teacher and student assessment. So the teacher and the student get to decide what gets put in the portfolio. There's also those assessments through standardized testing, and we talked about this last week a little bit. Those national assessments, the National Assessment of Educational Progress is the NAEP framework, and the Connecticut Mastery Test is based on this framework. It's the most difficult framework out there. Sample population segments. We take a look at sample scores. We also have state assessments like the Connecticut Mastery Test and the, uh, the, the CAPT exam, which is more for high school kids. Basically, standardized tests are assessments by what students can and cannot do in regard to objectives on assessment. Assessment should be based primarily on observations of children engaged in authentic classroom reading and writing tasks. It should focus on children's learning and the instructional goal of the curriculum Assessment should be continuous based on observations over a substantial period of time. <clears throat> it should take into account the diversity of students' cultural, language, and special needs. It should also be collaborative and include participation from the kids, the parents, and the teachers. It should recognize the importance of using a variety of observations rather than relying on one assessment approach and it must be knowledge-based and reflect on our most current understanding of the reading and writing processes. And so our conversation is going to end right here. Basically wanted to just sort of build that foundation for you in terms of what assessment is, the different kinds of assessment, and the power that assessment has between the teacher and the student. When we meet on Wednesday evening, we'll jump right into running records. We'll talk about what they are, how meaningful they are, and then, of course, we'll practice running records right in class. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you on Wednesday.